For now, you may have learned about uh, the history is usually divided into three periods. The periodization is history is usually known as the ancient period, the medieval period and the modern period. So, this year, for this particular syllabus, you are supposed to learn many things about modern period of history. The modern period of history is usually known with the European dominance over the world, the emergence of United States of America as the world power, and freedom movements fought amongst um, the many European, European uh, sorry, many African and Asian countries of the world. The modern Indian history or the modern world history is usually linked up with two important words. They are usually the political words used to explain the uh, phase or the concepts of the history of that particular time. The first and the foremost important word which is used to describe the modern period of the world is imperialistic phase of history. Imperialism is a very uh, known concept for the world in 18th, 19th and 20th centuries. Uh, all of you may have learned about the silk routes and the ancient and medieval sil uh, networks, trading networks between the European countries, the Roman nations and the Eastern world. But eventually in 1453, with the fall of Constantinople, uh, the Constantinople was took over by the Ottoman Turks and with, with this fall, the connectivity through the land for the trading network collapsed. And that is why there was a need to get connected with the Asian countries through some other substitutional way. And that is why you can find that there are many uh, sailors who got forth, who uh, uh, took forward many events, many uh, uh, voyages to uh, in event, to innovate new lands, to search for new lands. This was specifically because Europe was very, very much dependent on the Asian countries for many things, specifically cotton and uh, spices. And India was the foremost important country who was exporting those things to the European countries. So, with this network establishment, India was also exposed with its uh, peninsula region, through its peninsula region to the European countries. Uh, eventually, as the trade networks expanded, uh, there was uh, an, a series of events which took place in Europe, which changed the course of time. And that introduced India with the phase of imperialism. Um, so, uh, there were cer certain events which took place in, uh, in Europe in 18th to 19th to 20th centuries. They are, uh, can be called as the reasons of uh, emergence of imperialism in Europe. And that actually uh, reflected on India. And that is why India became the foremost important colony of the British East India Company first and then the Queen of England. Uh, the first reason which was responsible to gain uh, control over India or in like colonies like India was the scientific innovations. Uh, there were many innovations, many discoveries. The sea routes and discoveries of new, new lands were one of them. But along with that, uh, James Watt steam engine or then uh, uh, use of electricity or then use of many different materials which were uh, unknown to the world before. Certain scientific innovations introduced European nations with new products. Those new products, those new energies to create new products actually uh, implied or rather affected their trading patterns with the Eastern countries. Along with that, with scientific uh, technology enhancement, there was industrial revolution which took place and an era from 9, 1750 to 1850 which was called the industrial era in Europe. That, that particular era, that particular century actually created dominance of Europe, European countries over the rest of the world. Industrial revolution gave European countries a capacity to produce more in little time with the use of good raw material which actually created a mercantilist policy in Europe that created dominance of European countries over the Asian countries. We have seen that during Silk Route and the ancient trading route, uh, when the ancient trading route was very, very dominant, when India was exporting many things to the Europe, then Europe was very, very uh, much dependent on Indian countries. Now the dependence was same, but the, de the reason behind the dependence changed. The industries European industries were dependent on raw material which was provided 
through the colonies, India, China and many other colonies of Africa to the European countries. And that is why this industrial revolution created a need, a space which actually gave room to this imperialistic phase in Europe. The third important reason which is uh, actually um, very very much concerned about African uh, to the African and Asian colonies or the countries that they were not strong enough to retaliate whatever going on with them. They were very weak countries uh, as compared to European countries they were not developed so much scientific de uh, development was not there, industrial development was not there and the countries were actually unorganized and that is why European countries sought to gain a control over this African and Asian colonies in that, in that particular time. Uh, there is also one another reason for that is uh, in 19th and 18th century Europe uh, there were new uh, nations who were taking births at that particular time. People were coming together, they were demanding their own rights, monarchical ideas were uh, actually uh, actually being challenged by the people, people were demanding their own basic rights that was uh, a start given to it by the French Revolution in 18, uh, 1789 and afterwards till the unification of Germany and Italy, the newborn nations also, also tried themselves in this uh, struggle of power uh, over the African and Asian countries. This particular struggle brought the imperialistic phase in the world. The imperialism, the word imperialism means to have a, a political dominance over some other country. A country is dominating some other country with political means is the actual meaning of imperialism. But imperialism in this particular time was not only political imperialism. The imperialistic ideas were highly dominated by the economic imperialistic thoughts. The economic imperialistic thoughts emerged through the mercantilist policies. Uh, the Adam Smith, uh, who was actually who is actually known for his uh, contribution in economics, he and along with him a, a people, a group of people, actually uh, gave growth to these ideas. Uh, these ideas uh, dominated the sphere in polity also. This economic imperialism uh, comprises of three things. First is obviously using natural resources hmm, of the country captured by you. The country's capture is social, economic and political. Uh, all of the spheres should be in your own hands. Second is gaining more and more economic profit from the colony. And third is entire economic dominance over that country. Now, while you are trying to gain economic dominance over any country, you are expected to have political rights in your own hands. And that is why imperialistic thoughts are usually linked up with economy, so also with the political dominance. Uh, economic and political dominance in imperialism had different images, different effects over the Asian and African countries. Now we can see the political enslavement of the countries and that is why in later years we see that there are struggles to gain freedom uh, from uh, Asian and both African countries. Other one is giving protection to the nation, giving protection to your colonies, uh, giving protection in the sense that protecting your own economic and political rights, not protecting the people of the country. Third is establishing various trading treaties with the nations with the countries uh, getting concessions and uh, pushing your demand in that particular country. Fourth is creating your need of your trade in that particular country. So you are clamping down the trade which was prevailing in that country and establishing a substitute demand of your production in that particular country. And the most important work done by the European countries, rather it, it is very visible in India that European countries use that their divide and rule policy in uh, the enslaved countries of Asia and Africa. Now, according to those all those uh, facts, we can see that imperialism is not a phase li linked up with only political ideas. This phase also linked social ideas with it, social values with it, economic phases with it, and uh, along with that. Uh, every common citizen of that particular part got linked up directly or indirectly got lim linked up with this imperial ideas. Now while thinking about imperialism as a concept, uh, you may have uh, give focus on uh, some terminologies like what actually imperialism is. 
the other one is what actually economic imperialism is but along with that you are supposed to get information about the constant fall of constantinople the, in which you are actually constantinople fail, uh, fail in uh, the hands of ottoman turks and what are the implications of uh, imperialistic ideas done by the european nation so basically this act, uh, whole part is linked up with uh, some theoretical knowledge more than any informative knowledge for informative knowledge you are just uh, need to look at the facts that the year uh, when Constantinople failed won and uh, through which ways these European countries seek uh, gaining control over the Asian and African countries.